perceive differently now than you did in sixth grade. Whether it be football, you know, sports, high school, <coughs> schooling, your parents, your brothers, your, your family. I mean, I'm not trying to answer for you. I'm just saying something that six years ago, when you were in sixth grade, you see, you, you thought you saw something and you thought you were right, and now that you're a little older, you see it from a different perspective. Uh, I would say grades, probably. Grades one of them. Like back in middle school, you didn't think this was a basic A, B, C, D, and like they don't matter that much. Now when you get to your senior year, you realize that grades are really important for doing like college or financial aid. They're extremely important getting scholarships, and they matter a lot. That's good. How about, um, I'm just going to give you one, how about your parents? How about, uh, how do they raise you, and how do they make you follow rules that you didn't think were important? Yeah, when you're younger, you don't think some of the rules they give you are as important. And then later, when you grow up, get to your senior year, you realize why they gave you those rules and that they actually helped you along. Sounds like they tell you to turn lights on and off and shut doors when you leave. Yeah. <laughs> you see that a lot differently now. Than you do. All right. <laughs> okay, now the second half of that question. As an 18-year-old, correct? sitting here now, and uh, your current perception of law enforcement compared to how you think you will perceive law enforcement in 10 years or 12 when you're 30 or, you know, when, you, when you're into an established career, yep. a few years into that. And, and that's all in the assumption that you're going into law enforcement. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd probably say my, like, knowledge part of it is just general general knowledge of what law enforcement is and I just know generally what they do like tickets and pulling people over that's, I just know general knowledge of it but I think once I get into it I'll actually see the real side of things and everything that they actually do and all the little stuff they have to do that nobody else sees kind of behind the scenes stuff like paperwork and all that and I'll probably realize it's not as high action as Everyone thinks it is, like they see on the TV shows. Right. TV shows you know, can be pretty boring. Not a direct reflection. <laughs> <laughs> um, those were good answers. Good job. Another definition. Define discretion. Officers have a lot of discretion, and specifically traffic enforcement officers like myself, whereas uh, criminal investigators don't have as much discretion because when people break into a place or people beat someone up or people kill someone, you know, there's not a lot of discretion there on, on the actual investigation or act, whereas if I stop someone for a traffic violation, I can give a warning or oh. a ticket. Okay, I can use officer discretion. Okay, and that's that comes with a lot of, of power, a lot of authority, but also a lot of responsibility. Okay. Um, well, I've kind of answered what does it have to do with law enforcement, but do you think you could use it without it affecting your integrity or your character? Yeah, I believe I can. I'm so I'm a very honest person and stick to what's supposed to be done and what's right. And I do, usually do the right thing. Okay. All right. Let me give you all an example that I was faced with just the other day. I stopped a car on I-35, and this question's to you, but you can all think about it. For... And I walk up and I ask for a driver's license, registration, and insurance. And the driver tells me that their grandfather is on his deathbed in Clear Lake. And they are about 30 miles away from Clear Lake at the time. 
grandfather's on his deathbed, and the family is trying to gather to be there when he dies. What do you do? Uh, uh, without without <coughs> affecting your integrity and your character. It's not fair to the person that I just stopped at 85 miles an hour and gave a ticket to him. I think, depending on their driving record, if they had like a bunch of <coughs> tickets, then I'd probably ticket them because you know that they've been doing a lot, maybe not, maybe not just for this situation. But if the record's pretty clean, I think I'd give them a warning and tell them to slow, to slow or try to slow down. I know that they're in a hurry, but I'd be safe on the road. That's a good answer. That's a good answer. Is that fair? I would turn on my lights and give him an escort. What's that? I would have turned on the lights and given him an escort. I'd love to, but we can't do that. <laughs> because then if they wreck, they say it's the police's fault. That's Or they don't. Their attorney does. <laughs> so, that... that I did give a warning, so. But, but you, it's it's not fair to the person that I stopped just before that and gave him a ticket for eighty five, right? So, discretion is a, is a big part of it, and 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 you know you, that those are things you have to live with, and it's your integrity and your character that's on the line. So, uh, if you get into this career, those are things. You um, back into law enforcement, can you name me some law enforcement specialty groups that you may or may not be interested in? You mentioned one of them, bombs. Yeah, SWAT. Okay. We're going to get a SWAT team. Just on the bomb squad. Yeah. Can you think of any other specialty groups in law enforcement? Uh, I don't know, FBI. That's a, that's a department. Just a canine. Um, you've got bomb canines, you've got drug canines, you have tracking canines. SWAT, there's detectives, there's investigators, there's, there's lots of investigators. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the last question. I'm gonna give you one example of a what if. Understanding that you have not been through the through training and you 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 haven't been taught the, the, the laws and the You hear a commotion outside, out this door right now, knowing this is all you know right here. You hear a commotion, and you run out there, and there is someone that you may know, you may not know, a big guy, and he's got a baseball bat, and he's got your principal or a teacher or somebody down on the ground, and he's swinging. <coughs> what do you do? And, you, and you're, let's say you're, you're me, you're an officer, you've got a gun, you've got all these tools at your disposal. Uh, I'd probably first yell, start yelling, I'd give them a warning, but that'd be a short, like if, if they don't respond right away, then... What are you going to say to them? Uh, Most universal uh, command in the world. Freeze. Stop. Stop. <laughs> 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 Uh, tell them to stop if they don't listen, then give them a warning that probably pull up the taser and give them a warning that I'm going to tase them. And if they don't respond to that, then. Okay, that'd be great. I don't have a taser. Oh. Um, <laughs> uh, just give them some sort of warning, and then if they don't respond right away, then I'd probably run over there and either try to grab the bat or tackle them. Okay. Um, is that a deadly force encounter? Deadly force is justified when the person cannot be captured in any other way and the peace officer reasonably believes that they would use deadly force against another if they weren't stopped. Okay. Now, could you kill somebody with a baseball bat if you're standing over and hitting them? Yeah. Yeah? Right? Anybody want to make that decision? No? Well, police officers make it all the time. And they have that long to make it. So, you know, if, if you can do it without a gun, that'd be great. You know, with a 
taser or just go tackle them if they don't see you. That'd be great. But, um, so good answer. Yeah, that was a good answer. Any questions for me? Uh, what's the craziest story you have in your career over a long time? Um, any chases? Oh yeah, I've had chases. And I've not hit a cow. I've not even, knock on wood, I've not even hit a deer. I've hit cars, but I've never hit a deer. Um, I've hit a ditch once. Uh, that was pursuing a murder. That's probably my craziest story, actually. Um, was it in 2001, I think? Um, a, a man named Conrad shot and killed a woman, shot another woman in the head. And you all know where Conrad is? Over east of Ellsworth, and, yep. or actually east of Randall, quite a ways. Yeah, um, he shot a woman, killed her, shot another one, and left her for dead. Uh, took one of their vehicles, and I think, and I'm not positive about this, I know, I think he kidnapped one of those two women, set the 16 year old daughter, and kidnapped her and took her with him. Um, and then it was, the vehicle was found, and there was a pursuit all over Hamilton County, down by Ellsworth. And Randall and all over the place down there. And uh, this guy was literally, when he was being chased, he literally reached out the back and was shooting at us. I wasn't there then, but he was shooting at the law enforcement that was pursuing him. And um, <laughs> we had an airplane overhead that was flying. I mean, as fast as you can drive a car, it's pretty slow for an airplane. So he was hovering back and forth and keeping the keeping the vehicle in sight down below. And so it was easy to tell where the car was because you could see the plane. So they were coming across, <laughs> I can't believe I'm confessing this. Um, they're coming across a gravel road south of Ellsworth and they're going east. And I can see the dust flying and I'm going to go up there and I'm going to park my patrol car and I'm going to get out of it and I'm going to end this thing because I don't want anybody else getting hurt. And um, because this guy's just driving stupid. And I drove up there, and there were two Iowa State Patrol cars that I didn't know were there because one was from Cedar Falls, and the other one was from my office in Fort Badge, and I didn't know he was there. And as I was going up there to go park my car, as this car was coming across, one of those cars pulled out in front of me. And I was going, I don't know how fast I was going, but I had to take the ditch, and I went down, and I went. And I came to a sudden stop, and my car was like a banana. And it was uh, that was that was probably the craziest thing. But then what we did was another. The guy went by, went right through the whole thing, and out. And then he jumped on the interstate. He was driving the wrong way. He was going north into southbound lanes, and he was just an idiot. And so I jumped into another car with another guy, and I uh, we went out onto the interstate. And the guy, then the, the guy had gone into the ditch and turned around and was coming back out, and he was coming right at us. And this guy goes, what do I do? I said, hit him. So the guy just turned around us and didn't hit him head on. <coughs> hit him in the back corner, and his car almost rolled over. It was a, it was a uh, trailblazer, I think, or a blazer, one of those, something like that. It almost rolled over, but it didn't. So he was going south and southbound lane. He went through the median. And then he went north in the northbound lane, so we went across and tried to hit him again, and we missed him, or the other driver missed him. And so then he went up, and some of you might remember this, and he went up the exit ramp, and there was a DOT car sitting there, and he hit that DOT car. But that was probably the craziest thing I've ever been involved What's that? I was going to ask if you got cops, but I missed it. No. But there's a lot of crazy things that happen. So, but one minute you're driving around drinking a Mountain Dew, and the next minute you're in a pursuit or in a shooting. Or, I mean, I've never been in a shooting, but I've been to where shots have been fired several times. And so, you know, it's it's a it's a mental preparation thing. Or, you know, even though you think you're having fun, you know, you're ready. So, all right. Good luck. Round of applause.